This is the CNC Router Tips Podcast, Season 2, Episode 1. Let me tell you, you actually learn more about business by being in business than you could ever possibly learn by going to school to study business. Having said that, there are many things that you can learn while you're studying business that would take much longer to learn trying to figure it out on your own. This is the CNC Router Tips Podcast, a show which answers one question from you, the listener, about CNC router tables, CNC software, hardware, web hosting, and business. I'll help you get started in your CNC hobby or business and help you cut through the confusion. Today's episode is sponsored by TheMakersGuide.com. The Maker's Guide. Useful tools for makers. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the CNC Router Tips Podcast. I'm your host, Bill Griggs. It's been a while since I've been with you talking about all things related to your CNC router tables and, uh, you know, how you're doing things to create new and exciting projects, how you're doing things to create businesses, how you're doing things to just create fun things to have around the house. And, it's really been impressive to see the growth in this activity because in, in the last few years, there has been quite a proliferation of new machines, new software, and uh, new tools that make the job so much easier than it was initially. Now, for those of you who don't remember, I will tell you a bit about my story. I was working a uh, nine to five job and I also had a radio controlled model airplane business that uh, I was making kits and selling accessories with. And uh, as I got to the point of, of developing newer and newer kits, I wanted to, you know, explore different ways to make them quicker and easier. And, uh, you know, I had been using band saws and drill presses and, and things like that to cut out all the parts for my, uh, uh, my kits by hand, you know, I'd have a, a group of templates and I'd, I'd stack wood and then, you know, cut each of the individual parts out using the templates and then, you know, sand them down. And it was a very long process. And, uh, I had, uh, some experience with the laser cutter and, uh, I was having some kits laser cut, but um, one day a friend of mine showed me a kit that he had received from Germany from from a company uh, that was making uh, RC kits over there, and it was for a uh, F4D jet. It was a ducted fan, and uh, the parts were made using a CNC router, and I'd never seen parts that came off of a CNC router, but these were really nice. They all interlocked and tabbed together very much like the laser um, parts that I did. But at the time, um, this looked like something that maybe I wanted to do because the laser cutter had limitations about how thick a piece of material it could cut that the router didn't have. And so I started looking around trying to find out, you know, how were these people doing this? How were they making parts with, with the CNC router? How were they um, finding the machines, you know, what was the information out there? And there was very little because we're talking, oh, this was in the 90s when I started this quest to look into it. And it took me quite a while before I got to the point um, where I had enough information to proceed, but I did. And when when I got enough information, there was there was a fellow on online who used to sell plans that you could use to build your own CNC router. And he used parts that were available from the hardware store. So as you can guess, by the time you get it all assembled and put together, you'd have a, a CNC router that was very slow because you were using threaded rod instead of uh, lead screws or ball screws to, to drive the uh, axes back and forth. And 
I knew almost immediately after I completed building this machine out of MDF and stovepipe, um, gas pipes, that um, it was not going to be a good enough machine to go into production with, and uh, I used it as a learning experience. Now, uh, that's kind of an expensive and long process to do that. And it took me years to to uh, to finally get to the to the point where I had a, a functioning machine uh, that could do stuff. And you know, I was lucky at that time because Vectric just came out with software. At the time, it was called V Carve Wizard. And uh, it later became um, just VCarve and then VCarve Pro, uh, which most of us are, are used to now. Uh, but back in the day, when they first came out with the software, it was new and it was free for about a year or so. Once they came out with VCarve Pro, though, that, that all changed. But um, I was able to take a drawing or create a drawing and create tool paths from it. And, you know, that allowed me to start making the parts that I wanted easily. And that was part of the whole thing. I didn't have to write G code anymore or do any of the other crazy things that I was doing in order to get parts made. And so then I built a, you know, I, I got that all built in and started making stuff. And about that time, well, it's somewhere in the 2000, Five two thousand eight range somewhere in that time frame. There's a fellow online um, who was a previous guest um, on our podcast, uh, Joe Cantrell, and he started posting pictures inside of um, RC groups, which was a big online forum at the time of a machine that he did, and it was called the Joe's CNC, and. He, he had two versions. His first version was made out of MDF and, you know, pipes and uh, roller skate bearings, just like the other one was. But he used some a little bit better um, uh, equipment on that one. And I started looking into whether I wanted to build that one. But uh, about that time, he switched over and decided that he was going to produce another version, which used aluminum extrusions and... Um, Acme uh, threaded rod and, um, you know, still sticking with um, bearings, but this time he used V bearings and angle iron to, um, to make it. And it was really uh, quite a nice machine. And I learned so much from building that machine and that kind of set all the rest of the, um, the things in place that I needed to, to, um, to be successful and to, to make, um, kits and things like that. So it, it was interesting because it was still a struggle for somebody who wanted to learn all about CNC to get the information that they needed in one place. And this forum went a long ways towards bringing that into being, but I wanted to share the information with others so that they could take what I knew, combine it with what they knew, and get their machines built faster. And so I started recording videos and putting them up on YouTube, and I started um, sharing the information inside of RC groups and in Facebook, which is which was kind of new at the time. And you know things. Things just started to happen. People started finding the information and gathering together. And uh, yeah, it's been quite um, quite nice over the years to watch this grow. Uh, in fact, we started the, the hashtag CNC router tips group on uh, Facebook, and we've got about 20,000 members, a little over 20,000 members now. Um, you know, when we started out, it was just, you know, five or six guys who were were in there. And it, and it took a while before we built up. But that's that was the uh, the case, you know, for after the, the first couple of years, groups started to grow. And once it uh, began to grow, about the time we hit a thousand members, I started this podcast. Now, I haven't looked back through... Um, through the dates uh, um, when we put out the, the first episode and everything on this, but I, I think it was somewhere around 2015. So 
you know, it's been a while, but we, we have grown steadily since then. And, and I miss doing these episodes. And so I thought I would come back and start doing some more for you. I'm probably not going to uh, spend a whole lot of time talking about, you know, where I've been or what I've been uh, up to, um, because a lot of it hasn't been CNC router table related. I went back to college and began pursuing a business degree. And so I've been taking courses and, and things that would allow me to get further in the business, um, uh, make more progress and know a little bit more about how things ought to be done. And so that has taken up a good portion of my time lately. The cool thing about this is, I mean, I already, I've been an entrepreneur since I can remember, um, you know, being able to count change. Um, I think that uh, most people who are trying to build businesses uh, of their own are that way as well. I, I don't think that suddenly somebody who's in into this for a hobby turns around one day and decides that they want to start a business that's that's unusual. But um, the good part about going to school and learning these things is that I can pass on the information that I learned there. And let me tell you, you actually learn more about business by being in business than you could ever possibly learn by going to school to study business. Having said that, there are many things that you can learn while you're studying business that you would take much longer to learn trying to figure it out on your own. So both paths are good. It just depends on which way you, you want to go about it or if you want to go about it at all. But it's my desire to share anything that I learned in either case with you so that you don't have to make the same mistakes I made and you can do things faster and, and smarter. You know, uh, my mom was always telling us each one teach one. And, uh, I used to wonder sometimes, you know, where she came up with all this wisdom and everything, but she was a teacher and she wanted everybody to help everybody learn. And that's what I hope to do in this. So if that is something that you're interested in hearing about. Fantastic. You're in the right place. You made the right decision to listen to this podcast because I know there are many other things you could be doing today than listening to this podcast. So I do appreciate very much you spending the time here with us today. There are many new and exciting software releases in the CNC router world right now. Um, one that comes to mind is Vectric Software just released version 11.5 of the VCarve software and Inspire software. I'm going to devote an entire episode to covering first VCarve and then Aspire in, in this uh, 11.5 and tell you about the new things that uh, you can do with the software. But um, there's probably four main new tools that we'll explore in detail. One is uh, freehand drawing, um, which is a tool that allows you to kind of mimic the way that a real pencil works and free flowing uh, drawings, which really you weren't able to do before in any of the Vectric software. There's also um, a thing called live manipulation where you could take the, 3D components in a, in a 3D view and alter them. And you'd see the results of the alterations in real time instead of having to, to go out. Uh, it's really difficult to explain because in, in the old version, you had to do your manipulations in, in one um, view and then click on the 3D view to see what was really happening. So this should make the workflow a lot easier. Um, you're also able to do sculpting over a model. So if you imported a model or you had one that was, that you had created, you could go in there and do, um, sculpting in real time and, and see your results, which again is, is much nicer workflow. And there's also the last thing, which is more support for 
SVG, Scalable Vector Graphics. SVG has really come out in the last few years, and it's nice that you'll be able to work better with that and, uh, you know, read the data and uh, everything. I'm looking forward to to diving deep into 11.5. And, you know, I will let you know my uh, thoughts and experiences as I, as I go forward with that. Another software that um, has been making great strides is CarveCo. Today's episode is sponsored by The Maker's Guide, creator of the Triple Edge Finder. Get the edge you need, save time and frustration on your CNC project, and make setup a snap. Save time and material. Set up your workpiece on your CNC router table faster than ever. Accurately set your Z-axis height first time, every time. Automatically locate the corner or edge of a workpiece. Reset your starting point in the middle of a program. Quality crafted right here in the USA on US-made CNC machines. Get the edge you need today. Go to www.themakersguide.com forward slash edge. The Maker's Guide. Useful tools for makers. Another software that um, has been making great strides is CarveCo. CarveCo is a recently released software that was ported over from ArtCam. ArtCam was one of the founders of 3D CAD software, and um, they were owned by a very large corporation, and then, you know, some things... uh, changed up and uh other folks decided that they wanted to to continue the development of the software and i think that they went uh the original designers went back and and bought some of the rights i'm not positive on that but anyway they changed the name from artcam to carveco and then they added other changes to the user interface and everything and now it's um a software alternative to the stuff that vectric puts out now i, I find it quite interesting that uh, both of these companies um, came from the UK. They have quite a a talent for creating great 3D software. There's three versions of of CarveCo. There's CarveCo Maker, CarveCo Maker Plus, and then CarveCo itself. And they come at different price points and with different um, features and and, um, types of things that they can do. So um, I hope at some point to acquire a carve co so that I can uh, take a look at it and talk to you about it. But, um, I have heard good things about it from, from folks and, um, you know, it's time to look into it and see what, uh, what's what. Now there's another software package that, um, has really gained in popularity and that's fusion 360 from Autodesk. Autodesk is, are the folks who make AutoCAD and, um, several other high ticket um CAD systems. Now Fusion 360 combines a lot of stuff that frankly you may not use or need, but oh man, is it powerful. Fusion uh 360 will allow you to make solid 3D models. It'll allow you to make surface models. It'll allow you to make simulations and animations of the model so that you can, you know, go in and, and, um, use tools to light and paint the model so that it's photorealistic image can be created from it. So in addition to all of those other things, you can do assemblies with it where you can put to, you know, create multiple three dimensional parts and have them mate together and assemble to, um, you know, simulate things. You can also do toolpaths, generate cam toolpaths inside of it. And you can also do 3D printing and a whole bunch of other stuff. Now, all of these features come at a cost, you know, they're, but like everything, you, you know, you have to decide whether this is something that's appropriate for you. They don't seem to have all the nesting um, things that uh, programs like uh, Aspire and VCarve Pro have or uh, CarveCo, but they do um, have some other things that are designed towards metalworking and, um, you know, 
uh, plasma cutting and things like that that are already built into it. So something to look at. I really like the fact that Fusion 360 is a parametric program. I mean, what that means is you can use formulas to make changes to your drawings and it automatically updates the other parts in the drawing to fit. So if I were doing a set of kitchen cabinets, I could specify the length, height, and thickness of the sides of that cabinet. And I could then change my mind about what size I wanted it, just type in a new length or a new height, and it would automatically update that part. And if that part was in an assembly where it was, you know, shown to be related to another part, it would change the other part to fit. So kind of cool stuff. Anyway, we'll be talking more about that in the future. So anyway, throwing three different pieces of software at you and is probably a bit much for one episode, but I kind of wanted you to know about the things that I would like to talk about. And um, in addition to that, I'd also like to talk to you about some of the things that you need to do if you're going to try and create a business around your CNC machines. And I got to be honest with you, most of us never think about these things until we're right in the thick of it. So maybe we can walk this path together and, and uh, I'll walk you through the things that I did. Not all of the things that I've done were successful. Not all of the things I have done were in the right order, but I know that what that order is now. And I can pass that on to you so you don't make the same mistakes I made. So what can you expect from the CNC Router Tips podcast in the future? Well, you can expect to get information about the latest stuff that's coming out. You can expect to get helpful tips on how to use these machines and how to, how to run the software. You can also expect occasionally video content, which will show you how to do something uh, on the screen. Now, audio podcast is my main focus right now, but there are some things that you need to see to understand. And when that's the case, I'll make a video. I'll do a screen capture or I'll do a zoom room or um, whatever is required to get the point across. Because if you can't use the information, if you can't figure out how to do something, you know, it's much easier to just show you. And uh, I think that everybody wins, but that won't be my main focus. That won't be the everyday thing uh, because editing video takes a lot of time, but we'll do them as necessary. Now, I will also occasionally tell you about products and deals and things that I've come across that I found helpful and because I'm a marketer and I'm in business, sometimes I will tell you about a product that I'm an affiliate for. So I am an affiliate for several products and sometimes I will um, put up a uh, a deal or uh, tell you about something. And if it's interest to you, then you can go out and get it. And, um, you know, you don't pay extra for it, but uh, it does help me to pay for hosting the podcast and, you know, keeping the website up and doing those things. So they will be appreciated, but they won't be frequent. So I hope you, um, I hope you can deal with that because that's just the reality of trying to do uh, a podcast, you know, podcasts are um, an expense. So these new episodes are going to be around 30 minutes um, each. Uh, the other podcasts that I had prior to this were uh, longer format and we will use longer format when they are needed, when we have guests or when we have a, a topic that needs a lot of discussion. But the point is to get these out with as little editing needed as possible and as a little time commitment on your part needed to, to see these. And hopefully that'll allow me to do these more frequently than before. So, that I can cover more topics and give you a better listening experience. If you have ideas or, or thoughts about things that you would like to hear discussed on the podcast, you can 
leave me an email at billgriggs at cncroutertips.com and I will do my best to see what I can do for you. And if it's a topic that I know about, I will uh, almost certainly speak about it. So it's, again, it's billgriggs at cncroutertips.com and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you everyone for uh, listening in on this new season of the CNC Router Tips podcast. I'm your host, Bill Griggs. I hope each and every one of you has a great day. I often mention many different types of software during the episodes and hardware and cutters, and it can get a little confusing. So what I did was I put together a page on my website, cncroutertips.com slash resources. And on that page, I list all sorts of resources there from books to tools to uh, software, um, all the things that I use that make my CNC experience better and easier. And I hope you'll check it out. So again, it's cncroutertips.com slash resources. Now, if you'd like to have your question featured on the air, here's how. Need help? Ask me about your CNC router question on my podcast, the CNC Router Tips Podcast. I'll be glad to help or try and get you the help you need. I want this podcast to be a fun and personal experience for everyone and helpful. So let's keep it real and ask sensible questions. Please use common sense and show courtesy to everyone. That way everybody wins. Here are some guidelines to ensure that your question is qualified to be featured on the show. Please keep your questions under one minute in length. If it goes a little over that, that's fine, but um, don't ramble. If you have a website and URL, you're allowed to share it, but only once during the recording. Spammy or disrespectful or deeply private questions will not be considered for the podcast. If you need to ask more than one question, just make each question a separate voicemail. Thank you, everyone, for listening in on this new season of the CNC Router Tips podcast. I'm your host, Bill Griggs. I hope each and every one of you has a great day.